Hello friends. So in this lecture session, we shall see how to design a mod 3 synchronous counter using JK flip flops. And in the next video segment, we shall study the working of a mod 3 asynchronous counter. Now in a synchronous counter, since we need to design a mod 3 synchronous counter using JK flip flops, all the flip flops are clocked using a single clock pulse. Here, since we have a mod 3 counter, so what do you mean by mod 3? Basically, there are three states. Now, what are those three states? It is 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0. So when we are actually operating in mod 3, the states vary from 0 to 3 minus 1, which is 2. So the states are 0, 1, and 2. You have three states. But if I need to represent these three states using binary, then I have 0, 0, 0, 1, and 1, 0. So these are the three states. So since there are three states here, which are represented by a two-bit binary number, I need two flip-flops. I need two JK flip-flops. So I have two JK flip-flops and I need to design a synchronous mod 3 counter using JK flip-flops. So before we do that, let us revisit the JK flip-flop. So we know that if the inputs of G and K are 0, then the next state Q plus is Q. The next state happens to be equal to the present state. That means there is no change in the output. If G and K is 0, 1, the output is 0. If the input to J, K is 1, 0, the output is set, which is 1. And if the inputs are 1, 1, then what happens? The output travels. Right? It changes from 0 to 1 or from 1 to 0. Right? So now, if I observe this table here, now, if the present state is Q, and if I need the next state to be 0, then what should be J and K, right? So, in that case, I have two options. I could either have 0, 0 or 0, 1, right? If I have 0, 0, the output will be the same as, that is, the next state would be the same as the present state. Or if I have 0, 1, then the output will definitely be 0. So, therefore, J and K inputs would be 0 and X, which is the don't care element here. So, I would have 0 and a don't care element. As simple as that. So, next, if I need a change from 0 to 1, that means the output has to be set. So, what are the two possible options? The two possible options would be, let me try to define them. I need a change from 0 to 1. So when do I get a 1? When I have 1, 0 or when I have 1, 1. So when I have 1, 1, of course the output toggles from either 1 to 0 or 0 to 1. So therefore, J and K would be 1, X. So next I have 1 to 0. The present state is 1. The next state is 0 here. So when is the next state 0? The next state is 0 if I have this combination 0 1 or again there has to be a toggle isn't it so therefore it is x 1 and then I have 1 1 so when you have 1 1 when it is 0 0 that means the next state is equal to the current state that means there is no change so for 0 0 is the no change condition or the output should be 1 when I have 1 0. So it is x0. So these are the inputs for j and k. Right? So the inputs for j and k when I have a change from 0 to 0 would be 0x. Zero, 0 to 1 would be 1x. 1 to 0. If the next state has to change from if the state has to change from 1 to 0 it is x1 and if the state has to change from 1 to 1 then it has to be x0 here. So this indicates the current state and Q plus indicates the next state and these are the inputs of J and K. So now we need to have this design, right? So the counter should change from 0, 0 to 0, 1, then from 0, 1 to 1, 0 and then again from 1, 0 to 0, 0. So then how do we do this design? So let us see for these changes, what should be the inputs of J and K. So now here, initially the state is 0, 0. It moves from 0, 0 to 0, 1. 
and then from 0 1 to 1 0 and then again back to 0 0 from 1 0 here all right so initially the state is 0 0 the next state of q1 and q0 that is q1 happens to be the output of the first that is the flip flop the msb flip flop and q0 happens to be the output of the lsb flip flop there are two flip flops flip flop 0 and flip flop 1 okay right so the state has to change from 0 0 to 0 1 so here for q1 it is 0 to 0 the current state is 0 and the next state is 0 so i need to look in for this option which is 0x but for q0 it is a change from 0 to 1 so 0 to 1 is 1x next if the current state is 0 1 the next state has to be 1 0 so for q1 the change of state is from 0 to 1 0 to 1 is 1x but for q0 it is 1 to 0 1 to 0 is x1 next if the current state is 1 0 the next state has to be 0 0 again so here I have 1 to 0, 1 to 0 is x1 and 0 to 0 is 0x. Alright, so now I need to simplify the expressions for j1, k1, j0, k0 by using a two variable k map and then I need to identify the inputs for j and k. Alright, so now let us have a two variable k map. So this is Q1 and Q0. So let, let us do for J1. So this is 0, 1, 0, 1. So for J1, it's going to be 0, 1, x. And this, of course, I consider it as don't care. So I can combine these two. So what is J1? J1 is nothing but I have Q1 gets cancelled. So I have Q0. Okay, so J1 equals Q0 is what we have got. The next one, so let me do it for K1. So for K1 I have X, X1, so this is again X. So K1 will be equal to 1. So K1 is 1. Then I need to find for J0. So what do I do for J0? Again have a two variable K map for J0. So this is Q1, Q0. For J0 it is 1, X, 0, X. Right? So I can combine these two. So therefore this is for J0. So J0 is Q1 bar. Right? It's Q1 bar. So J0 equals Q1 bar. Whereas for K0 so again, I have a two variable K map. So this is Q1, Q0. So I have X1, X, X. So for K0, I get 1. So again, for K0, the value is 1. So how do I design this? So I have two flip-flops, J and K. So this is J1, K1. The outputs Q1, Q1 bar. And this is J0, K0, Q0, Q0 bar. Now since we are actually designing a synchronous counter, both these flip-flops are triggered by the same clock pulse. So I have a single clock which triggers both the flip-flops. And here I have K1 and K0 being equal to 1, isn't it? So K1 is 1. And K0 is also 1. So this is 1. So this is tied to 1. K0 is also tied to 1. And I have the outputs. Q1 and Q0. Now what about J1? So J1 is nothing but Q0. So the same output of Q0 is tied and is given as the input to J1. Whereas J0 equals q1 bar so this is q1 bar so the output of q1 bar becomes the input to j0 okay so finally we get the outputs 
here this is q1 and this is q0 and this is the design of a more tree synchronous counter so this is q1 and this is q0 So this is how we can design a mod tree synchronous counter using JK flip-flops. They're very simple. Now, if you know the change of states of J and K, what are the inputs you need to give for the JK flip-flop when the output changes from 0 to 0, 0, 1, 1 to 0, 1, 1. But if you know this table, you can write, get the entire table, solve using KMAP, and then do the design very easily because the design of synchronous counters are very simple and very easy. We have just seen that if you have gone through the video lecture which talks about the differences between synchronous sequential circuits and asynchronous sequential circuits. Right? So with this, we conclude this lecture and in the next lecture we shall see the working of a mod 3 asynchronous counter. So in an asynchronous counter, both the flip-flops are not triggered by the same clock. So what happens there? We shall see and how we can design a mod 3 counter, asynchronous counter using JK flip-flops. We shall see that. Now do not forget to like, share and subscribe and press the bell icon to get notifications of further uploads. And do check out the i icon or do check out the playlist Digital Electronics to get all the videos on various topics of digital electronics and logic design. Thanks for watching.